Hey everybody, so welcome to another edition of Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase, where I walk through some cool tools, completely unsponsored, uh, that I have found throughout the year, and I do an honest review summary at the end of each of these videos. I've been doing this for three years, so if there is a technology that you don't see in this season's Honest Review series, make sure you check down below in the description to see all of the others that I have done. All right, and so the technology we are going to be reviewing today is... If you are interested in finding out my honest review about this technology, make sure you stick around. Uh, my name is Tony Zanders. I'm a library technologist. Uh, for the past four years, I've been building SkillType, which is a talent management platform specifically for the glam sector. So galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. Um, I spent about 10 years working for tech companies like EBSCO and Xlibris, and I'm excited to be here today. We launched this right during the heart of the pandemic when libraries were either hybrid or remote and really didn't have um, a sense of who to go to to get certain things done. Um, mm -hmm. Because if you're used to being in person the entire time, job titles really don't tell you who knows how to do what when you're right. all of a sudden all remote, right? Um, and so we sought out to design a tool that would sort of function as sort of like a, an x-ray for your org chart mm -hmm. um, and use linked data to start to map um, skills and expertise across different groups. Nice. So this screen you're looking at now is a typical screen libraries begin with, which is called a needs assessment. Um, and the needs assessment allows them to describe certain aspects of their organization that they need in terms of expertise. And so um, what are the strategic directions of the, of the library? We built a controlled vocabulary after analyzing Yay. strategic. I love yes, it. <laughs> Yay for controlled vocabularies. Um, we analyzed about 300 strategic planning documents um, from academic libraries, public libraries. Oh, very nice. I love that you did um, some some hardcore research into the actual end users, because a lot of things that we talk about on this channel are also taxonomy development. And I always say that that's important. So thank you for highlighting that's real in life. <laughs> Absolutely, it's real. Um, we spent about 12 months, um, and I'll actually just pull this up in a separate tab here. Um, it wound up being about 18 months with, with libraries mm -hmm. before we wrote a line of code, just um, interviewing them. Um, we had these town halls. Mm. There's probably, um, yeah, there's there's almost two years worth of these town halls that um, really was where we learned what the needs were. Mm -hmm. And um, all of them are public, but that that's really where uh, we learned about um, what the needs were. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was this wonderful um, community of public libraries, academics, yeah. you mm -hmm. had, you had Ivy leagues, you had um, state libraries all yeah. coming together around how can we use data to better understand our organizations. Um, and so we can't take credit for many of these ideas that came from the community, um, including these control vocabularies. Um, the second part to the needs assessment is around skills. Mm -hmm. uh, as our name suggests, skill type really tries to map um, the supply and demand of, of skills and expertise across the library industry. Mm -hmm. And so we've built a second control vocabulary of about 400 skills and competencies. Mm -hmm. um, we start with the library describing what their needs are, mm -hmm. but I'll, I'll show sort of how we tile this together in a moment. Great. But these are all sorts of skills, um, ones that are specific to libraries, um, like you know research data management, um, but also ones that are more uh, generic and like business skills or soft skills mm -hmm. like diversity mm -hmm. or um, even uh, public speaking. Mm -hmm. um, so what if um, a client has um, a very unique skill set? Maybe they have a very uh, hardcore um, digital collection. A good example is MIT, right? Like they've got yeah. like Chomsky's. I think they have like a very specific role for like what, all of that. Yeah. Are there ways for clients to suggest new terms? Absolutely. So um, at this point, we are simply crowdsourcing additions mm. to that vocabulary. And so right within the UI, they're able to make suggestions. Very um, nice. We still control the review process. And so it's not- A hundred percent. Thank you. That's very good. I'm glad it's not just like, yeah, just put whatever you want in there. Yeah. Um, no, I'm loving it. Like so much of the stuff I teach about taxonomy, you're doing and I love it. Yay. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> <peeking> out. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's super encouraging. I'm going to pass that feedback to the team. Um, good, good. And the last piece is around products and services, because a lot of our work requires expertise of a certain product. And so um, these include um, um, not just library specific products like, like EBSCO or, or Ex Libris, 
uh, but also more generic products like the Microsoft suite or uh, Adobe. Anything that's used in a library, we allow them to select from. Yeah, one question here. So can you type AWS? I know more and more libraries are using, aha, cool, you got it. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. so some of our, we work with some large research libraries that have mm -hmm. teams of developers exactly. and they host software yeah. open source. And so, yeah, it's at this point, um, we have about 150 different libraries and it's it's growing. And so there's a wide swath of different product needs. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, so so this is the needs assessment. This is a public profile. Anyone on using skill type can, can see what skills libraries mm -hmm. need. Mm -hmm. um, but what happens next is we start to uh, invite um, their teams. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a simple tool for, for either doing that in bulk or, or doing that individually. But once they bring in their employees, um, there is a self-assessment, a personal onboarding each employee does mm -hmm. where they start to describe themselves using the same structured data. So mm -hmm. they can choose what job role they have. We pulled these job roles from a combination of sources, including ARL annual reporting mm -hmm. um, and some other professional associations. Mm -hmm. um, we give users a brief description of what the role is. A short self-assessment happening here where mm -hmm. they describe, each person is now describing some skills they use every day. What products do I have experience using? And lastly, but I believe most importantly, what are you interested in learning? Mm -hmm. um, and what happens here is skill type starts to take that information to make personalized training plans for each worker. So this is cool. So right now I'm looking at a set of recommendations based on my interests. Um, these are videos, these are, are articles. These and you're are, pulling these in with linked data? Yes. Okay, cool. And so we, yeah, so we index um, training resources from now about a hundred different conferences, mm -hmm. um, library consortia, other training providers. Um, and we describe um, these training resources with the same vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And it allows us to- Sorry, um, yeah. because I also talk about auto classification on the channel a lot. Is this done by manual indexers or using automation in some way? Currently manually, mm -hmm. um, though we're tracking what we're doing to scale this up and automate it in the future. But right now we didn't want to automate something we didn't quite understand. Sure, yeah. Sort of well, you need a training set to start with and you have to do that manually anyway. So that's basically what you're working on right now. That's it. And, and so we're starting to get to a meaningful amount of, of data. Um, we have about, I'll jump to the browse tab just for a moment. Um, so we have close to a thousand different um, skills and, and products. Very impressive. That's cool. Across across that though, we also on the content side, we have about five thousand training resources that we describe with these. Aside from the training resources, we also use this same vocabulary to describe our organizations within skill type. So every right. every library is described with it. I love that because it gives you that continuity. If you wanted to, I don't know, create social network kind of knowledge graph things out of this kind of data, and I'm I'm doing a side wink here because a lot of my channel is about that. Um, yeah. I I know. Um, Shout out to David Meza again. He's one of my favorite people and he works on knowledge graphs that are kind of like this for NASA. Wow. Um, and okay. so I, I have a feeling he's going to be very interested in just seeing what you're all doing here because uh, he's always trying to learn what others are doing. Yeah, uh, but that's going to show that continuity between all of the different things that you're trying to do. If you have that common vocabulary, it makes anything else you want to do with it that much easier. Yeah, so organizations are describing themselves with the same vocabulary. Uh, the contents described with it and also each person is. And so everyone has a profile that instead of focusing on like what your job title is at your particular university or your library, now there's a shared um, descriptive framework for, for all mm -hmm. of us. Mm -hmm. So, so, so yeah, so there's these recommendations that are coming to folks, um, but they can also search and browse. Um, oh, so they can self-select. That's nice. Yeah. They have access to the, to the, this, this global training repository now. Um, and so, and so can, um, so can managers. So let's say I'm a manager of a team uh, for um, digital humanities, for instance, in the library. Would I be able to go in and suggest uh, teachings for my staff if I think that we're trying to go in a new direction for the next year? Yeah, that was a, 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 a very sort of popular requested feature that we finally released. Um, Great. And if you go back, I'll jump into the, the skill type team for a moment because mm -hmm. I can look at sort of, you know, um, all the data here. So once everyone's into skill type, I now have the ability to create teams. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so 
this is a way to bring in um, the different departments in the library, the different branches of the library. Um, but within that team, I can now see um, my employees. I can see uh, what skills they have. Um, so we're moving away from training and we're getting into now just sort of project management. Mm -hmm. um, and I can see um, more about each person. But if I go back a step, um, lists is something we released um, about two weeks ago, actually, which is the ability for me to make sort of like a Spotify playlist, but for training. Mm -hmm. And I can assign that to uh, my team. Very nice. And I'll, and I'll be notified when they complete that training. Um, so each person has a My Learning tab where you can see what's been assigned to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and these trainings, um, it's simple to, to create a list. I basically, if I um, like something that I, I came across, um, I can save it. Oh, so you're like bookmarking it, but to the list. I like that. Yep, I can so do a generic great. bookmark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or I can add it to a list I'm working on um, and I can keep that list for myself or I can share that list with my team, a topical feed. And there so, we go, perfect. Yeah, so there are different, on the right, you'll see these filters. There are different types of, of, of resources we bring in. And so the majority of the content is video-based, mm -hmm. uh, like on-demand videos, mm -hmm. um, but we are increasingly bringing in podcasts, um, presentations that are given at conferences, mm -hmm. like the actual presentation file, mm -hmm. um, but also... Uh, Articles, so these are PDFs. Mm -hmm. um, like for example, um, Ithaca SNR is a good example um, that they loaded a lot of their uh, research reports into into skill type. And mm -hmm. so um, these are not videos, obviously, but um, they are uh, quality uh, resources mm -hmm. that inform a certain topic and research yep. libraries. And so there's yeah, there's about five different types of training material we bring in. That's great. Yeah, and uh, the reason I wanted to to look at that is because there are, you know, as you probably know too, a lot of people do. There's a lot of different learning types. Some people like video, but some people just like to be able to to read through or see slides and and some different things. So I saw when you were on a document, there was a link out. So that's also good to know that you're not just scraping. You know, you're you're not the next um, what, what is it called, Sci Cyval? <laughs> yeah, no, no, you're not doing that, which is good, 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 good. No, no, ethically we, sourcing stuff, which is good. Abs absolutely, and and the goal is um. We only index um, either open access material mm -hmm. or, or Creative Commons licensed material. Oh, good. Great. That's um, good to know. But there is a growing amount of more proprietary material that's being directly loaded by the training provider themselves. That, that was going to be my um, next question. So, so that's available to people if they need it. Yeah. So those are customers of ours. So we charge uh, an organization uh, that has training material they want to load in mm -hmm. um, and they're able to build up their user community around that content. And so um, take, for example, um, Lean Library is a vendor um, based out of the UK okay. um, and they are a customer of skill type, not only for the um, the training material mm -hmm. that they want to load into to skill type, um, but they're also building out their user group and their user community here. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the long-term goal isn't just to index open material, but mm -hmm to create tooling for training providers to engage Very their nice. communities. It's all, you know, the kind of thing that I'm thinking about is when I get, have a new staff person come on, I send them an email of yeah. here mm -hmm. are some papers, here are some, um, and they're external and internal, here are some slides, here are some links to different websites, and here are some uh, Discord channels and Slack channels you may consider going to. Got so yep. you see mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's almost like another content type where it's just like, I hey, see. You've loaded, there's discords that people are interested in this, but you're not bringing that into your platform. People can just go there and use it because it already exists. Absolutely. And there's deep linking things you can do to have it pop the app up right yeah. in your, your yep. yeah, absolutely. Yep. Cool. Um, so the, the one sort of, since we're in the context of just sort of linked data, I think it's mm -hmm. um, important to show um, this way that we're trying to analyze all the data we're getting for a library. And so yeah. when you click onto insights, um, this is our first pass at doing an overlap analysis for the library to see. I love this. Based on based on the skills you said you needed in your needs assessment, mm -hmm. do you have those skills today? Mm -hmm. And what different categories can we put them into? So we have three categories. We have skills you've acquired. And so this is saying you needed skills according to your organizational needs assessment. And your employees said that they have these skills. So you, you, you've acquired these skills today and you can click to see who those people are. Um, the second category is interested. So these are, you said you needed the skills and people 
want to learn how to do those things. So the, who are those candidates for reskilling and upskilling across mm -hmm. the organization? Um, and I'll jump to um, the skill type profile to show in just a bit more detail. But um, <clears throat> if you click onto this, there's some other data we can show you. So we mm -hmm. can we can tell whether skill type has training available on that topic or not. Um, we can show sort of like a leaderboard, like mm -hmm. who is sort of displaying the most ambition trying to learn that topic because mm -hmm. uh, they may be a front runner for a promotion or a job opportunity internally. Um, and then the last category is, um, and I'll wrap up kind of the demo here. Well, and also and as, you're, to, uh, as, yeah, as you're getting into mm -hmm. that, I think another area that I would see this as beneficial is sometimes you can find in an organization that you're oversaturated in certain skills. And so Absolutely. not saying to deter people from learning, but, you know, instead of, you know, having everybody as an expert in said skill, yeah. hey, you have a front runner and maybe that person becomes a mentor to the others, right? So there, there's some other opportunities, I think, that, that are kind of buried in there. Absolutely. And we're still discovering different use cases. Mm -hmm. um, every month we meet with each customer. We're just asking, so how are things going? How are you using this? And there, yeah, there's a variety of use cases around mentoring and and new employee onboarding and a host of things. So you're, you're spot on with that. Um, so this last example um, is looking at a library that belongs to a consortium. And what we're able to do, because we're using a shared vocabulary across organizations, um, the third type of um, skill is a skill that you're missing. And mm -hmm. so you, you said you needed a certain skill, but you're, you're no one claims to have it and no one is interested in learning it. And so in that case, you have to go outside of your organization. Mm -hmm. um, and when you do that, skill type can show you a, a couple of things. Um, the first is um, we can show you if a prospective employee that doesn't work for you yet, but they want to, um, and they're, therefore they're sharing their profile data with you. Mm -hmm. um, because from my personal profile, I can share my data with up to 15 organizations. Oh, wow. Okay. This is a, this is a dynamic I was not expecting, but it's very cool. It's like uh, kind of sourcing of, of skills. Yeah. But it's, it's very quality vetted. Yep. Everyone on the platform is, is currently employed or a part of a professional association or, mm -hmm. and so I can, I can share my, my data um, with up to 15 different organizations. Mm -hmm. um, when I do that, I will appear as a follower, not a member. So we, we have these different um, roles within an organization. And a follower is someone that doesn't work for me, but they want to share their data with me. Mm. Right. So um, how can, because I can imagine um, some some very um, affluent uh, types of, of universities are going to get a ton of these. How yeah. would they, I saw there was a, a revoke. Is there a way to do that? in bulk if there's a lot of people trying to share their information with a certain university? Um, that's a good question. There's no bulk revoke feature yet. We haven't come across that problem just yet. And we do have some pretty prestigious, we have some mm -hmm. Ivy Leagues, we have mm -hmm. large brands. Um, because the platform requires you to be a, a, an active member of a current library to join. Mm, it limits you know, the opportunity for that. Okay. Yeah. So you don't, you don't have, um, it's not, like an open network yeah. where anyone can create a profile. And so okay. there's sort that of, makes sense. yeah. So it, we haven't come across that issue just yet, but it's, it's a great point to, to keep. Yeah. I'm just thinking here. again, as, as a, as a people manager, when I see uh, sometimes, especially with interns and again, it's, it's open when, when you put an internship, like job posting out, but uh, hands down at least 50 every day that I, wow. I have those. Yeah. So I know I've experienced that, but again, that's open. So this is not totally you know, open. It's, it's people that um, are known entities, so to speak. Um, they've been vetted to a certain extent. So you're probably yeah. not going to see that as much, but I just, <laughs> I was just thinking back to when I've had those issues. <laughs> Yeah, and and the other thing here, when a, when a library posts a job here, um, it's actually sort of the inverse of posting on a job board because um, what you're able to do is you know you, you title the job, you link it to the applicant tracking system, you associate yourself um, with with the job. Mm -hmm. um, but then what you're doing is this isn't going to every skill type user. This is this is only going to people with the job role you specify. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you can narrow it down further with the specific skills you require. And so that's not going to be presented to all skill type users, but it's it's going to be presented to the subset mm -hmm. 
that meet the matching criteria. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're, you're basically inviting those folks to, to connect with you. Makes sense. Um, and I, I like that too, because it kind of um, makes it more targeted, I think, which is helpful. Absolutely. Um, and you can define, you can limit it down to product experience or, um, or skills. Mm -hmm. So the, the last piece here, um, just to sort of tie it all together. So um, as a um, library, if I belong to a, a consortium, um, this is a, a membership that I have. Um, and we're able to take libraries across a consortium mm -hmm. and share the data across them if they affiliate with the consortium. So mm -hmm. take the Pascal Consortium, for example. Since this um, Horry Georgetown Technical College is a member of Pascal, in the um, talent audit, when they're missing skills, we're able to show them other members of Pascal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that have those skills. Very um, cool. It's um, it's truly making the consortium work <laughs> for what it actually is, which is great. For what it actually is. Um, and the consortium has their own view um, that's looking more across the different um, uh, members that they have. Um, and so they can now look downward across all the members. Mm -hmm. um, so linked data and kind of using a, a structured data set is really what's enabling us to, to, yep. to do this. Yep. Um, and, um, and so yeah, that's, that's skill type in a, in a nutshell. This is lovely.